Hey, how's it going? Kenny here and welcome back to Non-Lita Giants and up in today's episode, it's quite a special one. We have the Champions League round of 16, both legs, where unfortunately we have to face Manchester United. Arguably the best team in England right now. Well, they are the best team in England right now. They won the league title last season and they're sitting top of the league this season as well. So I know it's the Champions League, you're not really going to get too many easy games, but I was hoping for a little bit easier than this, not going to lie, in the round of 16 stage. So we need to do very well here to get past Man United. We're away from home first in the first leg, then we face Southampton at home in the league, and then we have the uh, second leg at Fratton Park at home to Man United. So we've got Southampton to play in between these two legs. Obviously they are our fierce rivals, but... In all honesty, we are sitting second in the league currently. They are sitting rock bottom of the league. We're also at home. Uh, I can't see anything past us winning that game quite comfortably, to be honest. So I am going to skip that game in terms of the uh, episode here. I'll play it off camera, but I'm just focused on the Man United games in today's episode. We've played Man United away from home already this season in the league. And we got battered 3-0. So I'm hoping not for a repeat of that. As long as we can get a one-goal defeat... To take into the second leg. I think we've got a good chance of qualifying for the quarter final. Because we're beating Man United at home on many occasions. I back us to do that. But let's just hope the first leg isn't a 3-0 victory again. Because then we are in serious trouble. Well the last episode was absolutely incredible. It has to be said. We beat Arsenal away 2-1 from uh, 2 away from home. Which is amazing. Goals from Acosta and Gasco there. And after that we absolutely destroyed Atletico Madrid 5-0 at home. Which was, um, yeah, way way much easier than I thought it was going to be. Way much easier. After that, after that last episode, only played five games. We haven't lost the game, but unfortunately we dropped points in two league games. We beat Watford away from home the next game. Beat them 2-0 very comfortably. Goals from Edson and Bruno. After that, we had our final Champions League game of the season. Away to PSG, and we beat them. We beat them 1-0. And uh, to be honest, they weren't great. They weren't great at all. A 1-0 win for us, a goal from Corich. That means we ended off the um, the Champions League league phase in second place, just below Real Madrid. Real Madrid, the only team who won all of their games. And also, of course, we beat Real Madrid in this season as well. So, wow. Definitely got a chance in the Champions League, that is for sure. We won seven games, lost just one. A freak loss away to Mets, it seems now. We were absolutely terrible in that game. But we won seven games. We beat PSG. We beat Atletico Madrid. We've beaten Barcelona as well. We've also beat Real Madrid in Europe this season. So, no reason to think we can't go all the way in the Champions League. But of course, we've got to get past some big teams to get there. Starting off with Man United, first of all. They finished ninth in the UEFA uh, Champions League league phase. But but I know how good they are. They're sitting top of the league currently in, uh, in the Premier League. They're five points clear of us. We have got a game in hand, though, and a better goal difference, which is nice. But they have hit good form again in the season. I think they've won like five in a row or something because we were top of the league. Well, we left off in the last episode, dropped a couple of points, so they must have won a fair few games in a row. Well, they won, they won three games in a row. They drew it home to Arsenal as well. So, get back to the recent results for us, though. After that, played Newcastle away from home. We drew 1-1, which is a nice draw, has to be said. Newcastle were just below us in the league at the time. I said to myself before the game, a draw here will be a good result. That is what we got. They made it 1-0 in the first half for a penalty, but Magnaghi got us the equaliser in the second half there. And late towards the game... They started to become the better team in the match. It was quite even up to that point. So I decided to just play for a draw. I went more, uh, more defensive in the game. And uh, a good point gained there, it has to be said. Not two points dropped in this game. One point gained. After that, it beat Wolves 3-0 at home, which was very nice. I asked for revenge after the FA Cup defeat. We lost 4-3 at home. And I got revenge. A first half hat-trick from Bruno. And get this. We went down to 10 men after 19 minutes as well. We were 2-0 up in the game at that point, which definitely helped. But I did fear the worst at this point. I knew Wolves uh, can score goals against us. They've done it many times, even at our stadium as well. So I was very worried at this point. But somehow, we managed to score another goal. And we held on to a nice 3-0 victory. After that, though, just before the episode, we played Fulham away from home. And unfortunately, it was two points dropped here. We drew the game 1-1. We took an early lead through Corridge. But then in the second half, they got a goal back. And we drew the game 1-1, unfortunately. But all in all, it's going well, going really, really well. Last time we lost in the league was at home to Arsenal. Only lost one Champions League game this season as well. That was away to FC Mets. As I said, we played Real Madrid, Barcelona, PSG, and Atletico Madrid. And we've beaten all of them. But our heaviest defeat of the season, well, joint heaviest defeat of the season, was away to Man United, where we lost 3-0, unfortunately. So I'm hoping not for a repeat of that. 
as I said, a one goal defeat, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I back us to beat them at home, but hopefully nothing too silly in this first leg here. And in terms of the team sheet, you've got Lopez in goal, Booth right back, Adelson left back, Mohamed and El Idrissi centre backs, and we've got Moreno and Maka and Ardagula in the midfield, Magnaghi on the right wing, Bruno on the left wing, and Corridge up front. So last time we played Man United, their attack destroyed us, it has to be said. Very, very quick attackers. Since then, though, I've, just, uh, I've changed my tactic a little bit, of course. Changed from wing backs on support to full backs on support. And I've also changed El Idrissi from a ball playing defender to a central defender on defence. So I've changed in that regard anyway. And also for this game, I've decided to put two holding, midfield, two holding midfielders in there today. Apart from the Segundo Volante on attack, I've got Macker in there as a defensive midfielder on support. They've got a very good attacking midfielder, Man United, called Bell, who's a very good uh, very good vision, very good pass over the ball as well. So hopefully we can if we stop Adam Bell. I think we stop Man United. So Man United away from home. Can we avoid anything bigger than a one-goal defeat here? Well, let's find out. Before we get started with this first match, though, guys, please remember that if you do like this video, to that like button for me. It's very important for the video's success. And also, if you're new around here and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button as well. It would really help me out and it's much appreciated. So let's get started and away to Man United. A vast revenge here, but to be honest, I, will take, I won't take revenge in its, uh, in its whole form, shall we say. A draw here will be fantastic. A one-goal defeat can be worked with as well. So, don't need to win the game. Although, winning the game would be sensational, it has to be said. Round of 16 against Man United. Hasn't started too well for us. They're dominating the early stages here. And Maka seems to have carried a knock as well. But 20 minutes into this game, not a highlight to talk of as of yet. Pretty terrible Champions League tie, this one. Do I have key highlights on? Let's check. I'm not... Well, I always do. Pretty, yeah. What's going on here, then? 30 minutes in, still no highlight. It's not a blockbuster, is it? Now we finally get a highlight. 32 minutes into the game, we have our first highlight of the game. And it's Adelson with the ball here. Bruno gets it and he you know, gives away possession cheaply. We get it back, though. Now here's Adelson again. He gives it away cheaply again. And Bell with the ball. I told you, if you stop Bell, you stop Man United. And what do we do? We let Bell run past us. And now Sesco has scored the first goal of the game. Well, it's going to be AR, but... I think that's onside, to be honest. I think that is onside. Well, first hole out of the game. And first goal of the game as well. Bell won the ball back from Adelson. We didn't win the ball back. He basically just got given the ball. Played it into Sesco. Did say that, didn't I? Stop Bell, we stopped Man United. And uh, we failed to stop Bell already in the game. Back in the highlight again. That man, Bell, taking a free kick. Wow. Okay. This is not what we needed. Not what we needed at all. Before the half time, we are 2 0 down. <sighs> when is the time to start panic? When is the time to start panicking, shall I say? It's Sesco again, who um, probably is the second best striker in England right now after Haaland. I think it's quite a tight call between him and Corrich, actually. Haaland is definitely the best striker in the league still, but. Hot, um, Sesco and Corich are battling out. And here, here's Corich. Corich, get, get in. Get in there. Just mentioning the bloke. Literally just talking about you, mate. And here he is. He scores. What on earth happened there with the goalkeeper? Though? I have no idea. But we're back in the game before half time. This game has really uh, livened up in the last 10 minutes or so, hasn't it? Long ball forward from Gula. The keeper made the wrong decision to come out for it. He misses the interception. And Corich basically just taps it into an empty net. And now it's 2-1. Okay. Now I'm feeling a little bit more positive about the game. A bit more positive now. It was quite an even first half. Not really too much difference between the two teams. That's why it was kind of annoying with 2-0 down. But we've got to go back. And if it ends 2-1, I'll take it. I will take it. 10 minutes into the second half. We're carrying a similar theme here. Of no highlights. And we finally get a highlight. 15 minutes in. Man United with a throw in. Here's Antonio Silva. He scored the second goal. Pass it all back to the keeper who messed up for that for our goal, shall we say? Mm. Okay, a bit worried now. Here's Valente. He shoots from distance. He tips the top of the bar and goes over. All right, time for a couple of changes here. I think. You know, Maka is tired, not playing particularly very well as well. It's Brianna Costa. He's still carrying that broken arm. I think he's uh, back to full fitness in like a week or two weeks. So that's nice. Andy Booth's had a terrible game as well. Let's get him off, bring Buffalli on. And also, Magnaghi. Wow, 6.3 for Magnaghi. Not like him. Let's bring on Let's bring on Edson for Magnaghi. 
Don't usually don't make such decisions to take Magnaghi off in a game, but 6.3 is rather poor, isn't it? So, obviously, you have an off day today. 20 minutes to go. Can we get an equaliser in the game? Well, if it goes 3-1, we're in a little bit of a uh, situation there. Stays 2-1, as I said. A 1-0 win, a one-goal win at home, and uh, at least we're going to extra time penalties. Bruno hasn't had the best game as well, so we'll take Bruno off. We'll bring on Nesta Rocha for him. 15 minutes to go. Let's not concede any more goals, at bare minimum. All right, now we're in the final five minutes of the game. Not too many highlights in this second half. Oh, goal at this point. Changes the tie, doesn't it? Could change the tie for us, though. Either Costa. Look, look at Russia. Is he offside? Is he offside? He's not offside. Get in there. Get in there. How big could that goal become? Come end of the tie, that from Russia. Get in there. Get in. Back from 2-0 down with 2-2 in the game. I thought Acosta waited too long, but obviously he didn't. He timed it to perfection. Russia gets in there. One touch back in the back of the net, and it's 2-2 on the tie. Wow, we've got a highlight straight after now. Man United seeking the advantage again. But we get the ball back. Oh, my word. Could we actually go win the game? Could we go win the game here? Here's Edson. Look for him. Where are you going? Where are you going, Edson? Battle with Dalson. Oh, for goodness sake. What a mess up that was. Still got the ball back. Dalson does really well, but... He's passing it to no one there. Still keep the ball, though. Still on the highlight. Here's Mohamed. Kicks it forward to Edson. But he misses out. Oh, my word. Here's Wano with the ball. Oh, dear. Now we're in trouble. Look, like we had such a big chance there, didn't we? We had such a big chance, but... Oh, no. I don't understand how he didn't get at least a shot off on goal there. He's in such a commanding position. Messed up completely and now they've got a goal back and 3-2. Wow. Okay. Well, that's rather annoying to end off the uh, the first leg here. But if I'm going on what I said at the start of the game, I would have taken a one-goal defeat. But to get 2-2 in the 90th minute, to concede in the 93rd minute, disappointing. But on the bright side as well, you know, this is... A better result than what 2-0 would have been. You know, we came back from 2-0 down to get 3-2. So, obviously, we've got a home uh, advantage in the next tie. So, as long as we win the game, as long as we win the game, we're guaranteed to go to extra time penalties. So, that's all we need to remember. Very annoying the fact that we conceded then late on, especially we had up the up there end of the pitch and looking like it was going to create a dangerous opportunity. But, all in all, I'll take it. I will take it. I still back us to win the game at home to Man United. I know we're very capable of doing that and comfortably as well. So, all that matters is who is the winner come end of the tie. And uh, hopefully it will be us. Anyway, I'm going to go play Southampton at home off camera. There are fiercest rivals, yes, but they're pretty terrible. Sitting bottom of the league. And uh, surely it's going to be a win there. Wow. What an absolute disaster. What a disaster. Do you know how I said that Southampton game is very, very easy? Second versus bottom of the league. Should be a guaranteed win for us. Well, we lost that game 4-1. We lost the home of Southampton, our fierce rivals, who are bottom of the league, 4-1. Wow. I think it's safe to say that me resting all the players for this Man United game certainly did backfire. We went 1-0 down in the game early on in the 7th minute. We got it back to 1-1, though, a goal from Gasco. I was attacking at this point. I thought, you know what, we got back in the game now. Surely we're going to go on to win the game. No. Definitely not. We were terrible in this game, by the way. Terrible in this game. We hardly created any chances whatsoever. They took the lead again by half-time. They made it 2-1. At half-time, I went attacking again. I went with a 4-1, 4-1 as well, with two attacking midfielders in there. And uh, that still didn't create us any chances. Then towards the end of the game, 20 minutes to go, still 2-1 to Southampton. I went very attacking, very direct as well, seeking that equaliser at the minimum. Well, that backfired massively because they went up the other end to make it 3-1. At that point, I lost my head. And then not long after that, Moreno lost his head as well. He went with a Kung Fu kick from behind and he got sent off. And then in the end of the time, they made it 4-1. So that was absolutely disastrous. I know I said I rested a lot of, t lot of the team for this game, but look at the players that were starting here. Lopez, El Idrissi, Edson, Vafali, Moreno, Rocha. There's no excuses for this at all. There is no excuses for this. And to be honest... I think this is the game we're going to say, yep, this is where we're blowing the league title. Losing the home to Hampton 4-1, you 
It's just absolutely ridiculous. I find as many uh, many players as I could a two week fine after that game. Obviously, they had to get a minimum, uh, well, maximum of six point four to get a fine because I would find every single player who featured in that game a two week fine if I could. But unfortunately, I cannot. So disastrous. They're bottom of the league now. It's only their third win of the season. Their first win away from home as well. Their other two wins are coming against Leeds and Sheffield United. So that shows you how disgraceful it is. And more importantly. Man United now have an eight-point lead at the top. We have a game in hand still. We've also still got to play Man United at home as well, but I can't see us winning the lead tile after that. Absolutely shocking. Funny thing is, I've rested the entire team, well, most of the team, with eyes on this Champions League second leg here, but the ironic thing is, we could be knocked out of this as well. We don't win the game, we are knocked out, so, wow. Absolutely disastrous. I really just hope that it was worth something at least. And we get through this tie against Man United. But in terms of the league title, we are definitely in a precarious position now. After Tottenham at home, we've got to play Man City away. So, yeah. Big, big trouble now. Big, big trouble. Anyway, we've got to move on from that. Terrible, terrible defeat. Absolutely shocking. But now it's about the second leg in the Champions League. Can we win this game? And can we go through to the quarterfinal? Well, lots of poor players in the team at the moment. So, in terms of the team sheet... I don't know what changes I've made from that last game there against Man United. Obviously, I just played a Southampton game. I know Moreno, he's out of the team. Maka, well, Maka was in the game for the last game. So, Acosta effectively replaces Moreno in the team. Acosta is finally back to full fitness, which is great. He had a broken arm. Played for the injury for about a couple of months now. But now, the cast is off. And maybe he can uh, unleash Acosta as well. We shall see. Other than that, I don't think there's any changes from the first leg, to be honest. I think Acosta just comes in for Moreno. So, the good news is we've got a very uh, strong team out today, which is... Uh, Ideal for against Man United. We've got home advantage as well. We're only uh, They're only leading by one goal in the tie. So let's put that surrounding game behind us. Let's go out there and let's win this match. Well, the first goal could prove crucial in this game. They score the first goal. We're in whole heaps of trouble. But if we score the first goal, it's level on the tie. And as I said before, we are certainly capable of beating them at home. We've done it many times. So let's hope we can pull it off. But I'm not too confident right now. Not after what I've just seen off camera there. Uh, I couldn't quite believe it, to be honest. I couldn't quite believe it. When they took the lead early on, I was like, oh, okay. We'll get back into the game. But then we went 2-1, 3-1, then 4-1. But anyway, Corridge is through here. But he goes right in the mark. Also brought all the big, hit big hitters on. Mag Nagy, he put in a 6.3. Bruno put in a 6.3 as well. Corridge came on the pitch. Gula came on the pitch. But no one could make a difference there. So, absolutely shocking. And now we're playing a much better team. We just played a team with a bottom of the Premier League. Now we're playing a team who are top of the Premier League. So... Yeah, doesn't bode well, does it? Doesn't bode well at all. Maybe the water bottle treatment uh, helped the players out. We shall see. Here's Vonderson with the ball for Man United. As I said, the first goal could be proved crucial here. Adelson gets it back from Vonderson. Now here's Mohamed with the ball. He kicks it long. This is why I never really like to rest my players, uh, a lot of my players in the league matches. Because every time I do, we seem to lose a match in every single manager I play. So I never usually do that. But I guess it's safe to say I underestimate Sandin a bit. And um, I was focusing way on this game. Sesco's through here, but I think he's offside. I think he's offside. I hope he's offside. Because if not, we're in big hole heaps of trouble. And uh, we could have blown the league title and the Champions League in a matter of minutes. And that'd be nice, wouldn't it? For goodness sake. He is disallowed. He is disallowed, shall we say. Goodness sake. Not a promising start to this game, though, is it? Fine margins there. Keeps it a nil-nil. Demands more from the players. It's a much better start to this leg than the first leg. 32 minutes for the first highlight. This time we've got two highlights in the first 10 minutes. Here's Korich. Magnaghi's through on goal. He's had two terrible games in a row. Will he score, though? He does score. Get in. Only his seventh goal of the season. He's a great player, though. But the last two games, he's been shocking. He got a two-week fine. He hasn't been great since his injury as well. But he just scored in one of the biggest matches of the season. So that is nice. And now it's level in the tie as well, which is great. Korich with the ball forward to Magnaghi. He just had a goal disallowed. But a couple minutes later, we score. Well, not even a minute later, we score. All right. I feel a bit more positive now, but still, it's only level on the tie now. So, it's always like such a big deal. One goal for them, they're back in the lead again, aren't they? So, I'd love a second goal. Can we get it this quickly, though? Here's Magnaghi. Koric! He scores! Is he offside? He might be offside. Oh, he can't be offside with a situation like that. Surely not, Koric. They're checking it. It's a goal. Get in. Get in there. Now I'm feeling... Much more positive. Much more. Po Where was this against Anton, by the way? Where was this against Anton? I have no idea what happened in that game. But look at this. 13 minutes in, we're already leading the tie now. 2-0 up in the game. Okay. 
Man United didn't have a disallowed goal, but apart from that, they haven't had a single shot in the game so far. Okay, we still haven't got any distance between us, though. Man United scored the next goal. It's level again, so. Now go get a third goal. Now go get a third goal. Also, the ironic thing as well is, if we knock them out of the Champions League, that'll give their even Premier League hopes even bigger a boost. Oh, God. Either way, we're a loser in the situation. Anyway, here's Bruno with the ball. Their right back missed the header. Oh, he's trying to find Maka there, who's in the box for unknown reasons. Maka, what are you doing in the box, mate? Get back in your holding midfield position. Anyway, here's Gula. Don't know who he's looking for. Bruno. Oh, it's a penalty. That's a penalty. Vonage just wiped him out. Terrible decision from the fullback there, because he's going out of play for a goal kick. My word, this is a penalty, which it should be. This is a chance for 3-0. And a 5-3 overall win in the tie as it stands. Korich, for the penalty. What a lovely start to the game this is. Come on, Korich. Get in. He sends the keeper the wrong way. Come on. Come on. Wow, I can't, I can't believe what I'm seeing now after just witnessing that against Southampton. Obviously, you guys didn't see. But I saw it, and I didn't like it. It was like a horror film. But look at this. Wow. 3-0 up in the game. Get in there. Now we have uh, daylight between us. Just 30 minutes into the game, and we are leading the tie 5-3. Hasn't been the most convincing performances by us, though. It's quite an even game, actually, in terms of momentum here. But all that matters is the scoreline right now, isn't it? But what is that from Adelson? Oh, my word. Adelson almost just got the assist for Sesco there. They still yet to have a shot on target in the game, though. Back on the highlight again. Adelson wins back. Now here's Bruno to Mohamed. Wow, fourth goal. It could be game over already. Bruno with the ball. Heavy touch there from Bruno. But he gets it back to Z. Yeah, he does. Bruno. Get in. It's 4-0. It's 4-0. Get in. What's happening here? What a... Wow. What chalk and cheese these last two games have been. 4-1 loss at home to the worst team in the league. And now we're 4-0 up against the best team in the league. What on earth is going on? All right. All right. I'm... I'm feeling much better right now. I'm feeling much better. Much better. It looks like we're going through to the quarterfinal, although it's still not over yet. We've still got a whole half to play, but now we've got a free goal advantage. 4-0. Class. Absolutely class. Well, that gives me hope as well for our league meeting against Man United. We've got to play them at home still in the season, so if we can win that game, we've still got a chance. In the they get a goal back before half time, which is um, yeah rather annoying. But still we've got a two goal advantage on the, in, in the tie, so let's not be too disheartened about it. But I think I, I reiterate now that the tie is not over. We're not dominating the game. We are winning the game 4 1, but we're not dominating the game. So let's not celebrate until it's over. But all in all, we've got to be quite happy with that first half, and we've got to be quite happy with that first half. And the front four are doing really well today, which makes a change. They've been relatively poor in recent times, all of them, to be honest. But in this game, they've all got a green rating, so that's lovely. Well, the second half's been very quiet so far, 15 minutes in. Not a single highlight to talk of. Hmm, it's hard to um, pick a player to bring off here, to be honest, because everyone's playing well. You know what? No changes as of yet. No changes right now. It's a big game for us. 30 minutes to go. Next goal as well. May not get the next goal. They're back in the tie. My word. And Jorgensen came close there, didn't he? He came close. May not have been the better team in the second half so far, it seems. Well, they're not creating too many opportunities, are they? You know, I'm taking off Acosta. I'm going to bring on... I'm going to bring on Moreno for Acosta. I'm going to play him as a defensive midfielder on support. Actually, I'm going to put Maka there. Put Moreno as a ball midfielder. And... Any other changes here? You know, I'll take off Bruno as well. I'm going to bring on Edson for him. And I think that'll do, to be honest. You know, let's put a mid-block in there. Let's change that to more often. Let's change back to a balanced as well. Go a little bit more pragmatic here. A little bit more pragmatic. Put the uh, the attacking line a bit lower. Still score a goal though. El Idrissi in the box. What's he doing there? Anyway, get the ball back. Here's Maka to El Idrissi. All right, they score the next goal. I'm going to be very worried. But if we score the next goal, I think that's game over, to be honest. I think it's game over. We score the next goal. Koric is there. Oh my word. How is that not his hat trick? Free header in the box, pretty much. How is that not his hat trick? Another chance here, though. Magnaghi with a free kick. It's cleared. We get it back, though. It's Maka. Out to Magnaghi. Moreno. Maka shoots. Oh, my word. Maka, what on earth? Never seen that before. That's a first. Wow. Maka almost with a sensational goal. 
Back on the highlight again, though. It's still not over yet. 13 minutes to go. They're certainly capable of scoring two goals late on here. Now I'm starting to get a little bit worried, to be honest. Come on, it's four against one there. It's pretty much four against one. What are you doing? How's he getting a shot off from that point? Just take him out. Just take him out. Don't let him get a shot on. Centre-backs haven't been great today. Only conceded one goal, though, so it's not be too harsh on them. Oh, Moreno, what are you doing? What on earth are you doing there, you idiot? Absolute idiot. I was going to say, he can't score from there. He can't score from there, surely. Nine minutes to go. Now less than five minutes to go. We've got one foot into the quarterfinal now. Three minutes at a time. Let's go defensive. They need to score two goals, remember. I think we're there. I think we're there. Let's not celebrate until it's over. Three minutes to go. They need to score two more goals. We've gone defensive now. No more highlights. We're guaranteed to be through to the quarterfinal. Although I think it's over already. It is over already. We're going through to the quarterfinal. Get in there. We just had worst result of the season. It has to be said. I didn't think we could top the FC Mets game, to be honest. But we lost to Ernest Landon 4-1. But just after that, three days later, we have the best win of the season. We beat Man United at home 4-1. 6-4 in aggregate. And we're going through to the quarterfinal. Get in. Now that is more like it. That is more like it. Very happy. Very happy now. I was devastated. I was disgusted. But now I'm ecstatic. Wow. What a roller coaster this episode has been. Losing away to Man United 3-2. Coming out from 2-0 down. And then just conceded the late, uh, last goal in the uh, the last minute there. That was disappointing. Then it got even worse. Worst result of the season. Worst, maybe one of the worst results of the series, to be honest. Losing the home fierce rivals and rock bottoms around them 4-1 was absolutely shocking. But, wow. To my surprise... After such a shocking defeat, we come back four days later and we beat Man United at home 4-1 to book our place in the quarterfinal. Who we get in the quarterfinal, though, I don't know because the round of 16 games are still going on. I'm pretty sure uh, next Wednesday or Tuesday we'll get the quarterfinal draw. Then we'll see who we get. Uh, we can see when the quarterfinal will take place, though. It will take place 10th of April and 17th of April. Got to play three games before then. Home to Tottenham, away to Man City. And at home to West Ham. Uh, obviously, we've got to win our two home games to stay in the title race. That is for sure. Away to Man City. A draw there can be a fantastic result. So, uh, we shall see what happens. Seven points between now and the next episode. I will very happily take that. But, obviously, away to Man City is a very tricky game. In terms of the teams left in the uh, Champions League stage, well, as I said, four teams have still not... Well, four matches are still yet to finalise. But Arsenal are through. Beat them away from home ready this season. Lost at home to them as well. So they're a very good team. Atletico Madrid in the quarterfinal. I will happily, happily take them. We beat them 5-0 so easily in the last episode. That's the team I want. The teams I looked at so far. Real Madrid as well are through. And they beat Barcelona 7-0 on aggregate. Okay, a bit scary. But also Real Madrid. We've also beaten them this season as well. Every team has through so far. Arsenal, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. We've beaten them all this season. So... Don't really have to fit any of those teams. Although Real Madrid and Arsenal, I'll, I'll try to avoid them, to be honest. In terms of the other teams, well, Leipzig look like they're going through. They're 3-0 up against FC Mets, although don't write FC Mets off completely. Don't know if I want them or not, to be honest. It'll be like it's 4-1 this season. Uh, Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich. Then you've got AC Milan and Man City and Liverpool and Roma. So, yeah, some very big teams left in the competition. The only team we could possibly get we've never played before are the German teams, really. That's Leipzig, Bayern Munich or... Dortmund, so they're the only real unknown where we haven't really played. We haven't played AC Milan either, I don't think, uh, but they're like, going to get knocked out to Man City, to be honest. I'm not sure we played Roma either, but again, look like Liverpool locked them out, so Bayern Munich, they could be one to uh, to avoid, that is for sure, but every other team, we've, we've beaten them. We're capable of beating any team, so there's no reason, to fit, no reason to be scared, no reason to feel out of our depth, although I just, just clocked Arturo Talisia scored 17 goals for Bayern Munich in the Champions League this season. That, that's rather scary. 17 goals in nine games. Who on earth is this guy? He's a very good striker. Okay, let's avoid Bayern Munich at all costs. I don't want Bayern Munich, please. But anyone else, I will happily take. But anyway, guys, that will be the next episode. Then the Champions League quarterfinal, both legs. We haven't got to play a game between there, apparently. So that should be a very interesting one. Who will we get, though? Well, you know who I want. We beat them 5-0 already this season. I want Atletico Madrid. Because anything like that performance in the, uh, the first time we played them, we're going through to the same final. So that is the team I want. But who will we get? Well, I'll find out in a... I don't know how long. In a day's time or in a couple of minutes' time. Depends on if I'll play after this or not. But you'll find out in the next episode, guys. Thanks again for watching. Please remember that if you like the video, to that like button for me. 
Also, if you're new around here, do that subscribe button as well. It really helped me out and it's much appreciated. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you for the next one.